There are a ton of dating and relationship shows to binge watch right now. There's Love Island, The Bachelor, and 90 Day Fiance. Some are infuriating, some are light and fun, but all of them are entertaining. Netflix has been responsible for producing some very entertaining love and dating content, with entries such as Too Hot to Handle and Love is Blind. However, their latest entry, Love on the Spectrum, tackles the romantic relationship journeys among folks diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm on the couch. This is Ronald, and I'm on the couch after watching Love on the Spectrum. Uh, This is a Netflix show, originally debuted in Australia in 2019, directed by Sian O'Cleary, produced by Karina Holden. We're still in pandemic. We're still thinking about, you know, things to binge watch, things that, and we've been watching a lot of things. There's, of course, you can watch uh, uh, Love Island. You can watch Love is Blind. You can watch... um, you can watch 90 Day Fiance, all the different iterations. You can watch The Bachelor. So many different types of dating shows to watch. So Love on the Spectrum, when I saw the preview, I was like, okay, so they're about to show us a dating show um, with folks. And and the premise of the show is that it is following about nine people uh, who all have, uh, who are all diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. So they fall somewhere on the autism spectrum, um, which varies. For some people, it's to a much higher degree than others, uh, but they're all autistic in some way. Um, and let me just say, anything that I say, I, I, I'm I not that familiar with autism. I've, besides what I've read um, and what I've seen, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any, and, and I don't know because no one's, um, no one's revealed to me that they've been diagnosed with autism, that I'm close with in my life or anything like that. So if I say anything, it's out of pure ignorance. If I say anything wrong, it's out of ignorance, charge it to my head and not my heart, um, not my intention to be offensive. And if I am, please reach out to me, correct me so I don't make the same mistake again. Um, and I'm saying all that to say because I'm, I'm talking about a show with folks who are on the autism spectrum and they are also pursuing relationships. So when you see the previews for this, um, I think my first thought was, oh, is this going to be exploitative? Um, what are we about to watch? And I mean, is this going to, am I going to feel yucky watching this? Um, because there's, there's a lot of shows that feel exploitative. 90 Day Fiance to me feels exploitative. It feels like uh, they find people who are, in desperate situations and then chronicle their (laughs) chronicle them making terrible decisions. Watching 90 day fiance is a yucky experience. And, and I expected that I wouldn't watch maybe more than 10 minutes of the show and be like of love on the spectrum. And I would be like, this is yucky. I can't do this. And I was completely wrong about seven minutes in, uh, they introduce you to a bunch of folks and you're immediately sucked in. I'm, I'm immediately sucked in. I'm charmed by these people. I'm charmed by uh, their experience as they're going through trying to find love. What I found is probably one of the best parts of this show is that it's as much a show about autism, period, and it's as much a show about dating, period, as it is a show about folks with autism dating, and I say it because over the course of these five episodes, I felt like I actually 
learned more about autistic people and their experiences um, than I have. I mean, in a lifetime of of reading things and picking up things from um, from folks who talk about it, or you know, in your travels where you just kind of hear things. Uh, I've learned more in this five episodes, and it made me more curious about autism spectrum disorder. And it just, I have so many questions. Um, I'd love to talk to an autist, autistic person and hear more about their experiences, all that. And it it just, it, it opened a window to a world that I didn't know much about. And I thought that was very, uh, that was very gracious of the people on the show. That was very gracious of the people making the show. The people making the show go at great lengths to not be exploitative. They're very kind. And I mean, you can tell in the way that they're filming, in the way that they're interviewing their questions, in the music they're selecting, in the scenarios that that these folks are put in, all of it, you can tell that it's done with such a kind and tender eye. And you're not meant to, you're you're going to feel emotional. emotional. Um, the only emotion I didn't feel was anger, which... <laughs> Which when I watch these dating shows, I don't ever watch these shows without feeling angry at some point. Somebody says something, somebody's up to no good, somebody's here for the wrong reasons, all that stuff. Um, there was, I felt sadness sometimes, I felt extreme joy, I felt happiness. Um, there's just so many other emotions while watching the show. I, you know, I teared up, I cried, I got goosebumps a few times. Watching this show is just, it's it felt so warm and it felt so good. Like you just, you sit here and you're, and I think watching the portions of, and I think, I think it's, it's kind of cliche to say, oh, these folks have triumphed after great, the great links, they're triumphant, look at them. But I really just, it, it just, it humanizes people so much. Like you're sitting there watching people that are dealing with all the same experiences that, people without autism spectrum disorder are dealing with, but they're in, in terms of dating, but they're dealing, dealing with all of the same anxieties and problems that we have in dating, but they're dealing it with a disability on top of that. And that they're navigating it so well is that's what makes it kind of like a, a, that's what makes it warming to watch. But the other parts that make it warming is the the pure earnestness that comes through the sincerity that comes through everyone. It just feels like, and, and, and those were part, some of the parts that made me laugh is earnestness and sincerity to a fault. I mean, <laughs> and I hope this isn't a, a spoiler, but there's a, there's one scene where one of the characters is practicing going on a date with her mother and she walks up to her mother. <laughs> she shakes her hand. And the mother's like, wow, your grip's really tight. It's like, you you don't need to squeeze that hard. And she says, she says, well, you don't have a good grip because you're old. <laughs> and I, I laughed so hard. <laughs> it was I'm pretty fairly certain she was joking, but it was just, there were several times in which the earnestness and the bluntness that comes through. That's the real heart of this show where you're watching people and you just you truly get the sense that they are being honest and earnest. And it's in a way that with other dating shows, you just you always feel like they're up to something. You never trust them completely. And I'm looking at you, 90 Day Fiance. You just see these relationships. You're like, there's no way you love this person. This is about money. This is about something else. There's an ulterior motive going on here somewhere. And here I am watching this dating show and it feels like there's no ulterior motive. And that feels good. That feels good to watch. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about watching this show. Um, there's several relationships here. There's several, uh, as you're seeing, um, most of the uh, the people that we see are still living with their parents and things like that. But then they show a couple of relationships where people, you know, fall in love and get into relationships and they move out together. And for them, the relationships are also a manifestation of their independence, you know, um, which is watching it is just it, like I said, it's opening a window to a world that I've never seen. There's things I've learned about autism that uh, women are diagnosed later than men. Most times uh, some of these folks weren't diagnosed until they were 18, 19 years old being diagnosed with autism and imagining going your whole life feeling different, you know dealing with all the troubles that you're dealing with when it comes to high school and middle school and them talking about those experiences in this, which is also, it just, it reframed 
everything that I think about humans, you know, the the people that were making fun of in high school and the people that were making fun of in middle school that um, that we don't know anything else about them. You know what I mean? We don't know their full story. Um, and there's no compassion in middle school. There's no compassion in high school. And you're talking about full grown adults. Like there was one guy in here who didn't get diagnosed till he was 20 years old. And it's, I, I could imagine the catharsis that comes with the diagnosis because at that point he's just like, oh, okay. Like it, it, it kind of makes sense. And you get that sense when they're talking, when they're talking about their diagnosis, they're like, you know, I knew, I knew it was different. I knew I was different, but I didn't know why. And then watching them come to these conclusions. So it, it felt eye opening for me in a way that, um, I felt great. I felt gratitude being able to watch this. I felt gratitude being able to learn like this. Um, and it just, it's a, it's the epitome of a feel good show. This show reminds me, if you like the uh, Great British British Bake Off, you will like this show. And just watching a show that's just genuinely being kind, genuinely being nice, um, and again, just doesn't feel like it has an ulterior motive. Um, now, with that being said, I feel like the only drawbacks to it is that, I mean, it's still a dating show. It's still a dating reality show. And there's some portions of it that felt like a little bit staged. Um, and there's only five episodes, so I don't, I didn't feel like we got as much of a complete story as we could have gotten with maybe a few more episodes. I felt like there were a few questions unanswered, but I don't, yeah, that's maybe that's not as much of a, as a, a, a weakness as, as I would think. I don't know. I'm wrestling with that one going back and forth after, after just watching it. So yeah, I just I, I think if if you need a if you need a pick me up if you need a show to, you know, just to, to enjoy that feels earnest. If you need something earnest right now, if you need something that, you know, a different type of reality show that isn't just a bunch of, <sighs> not a bunch of the cliche stuff we're used to seeing, in uh oh, excuse me, <sighs> not a bunch of the cliche normal reality TV show fodder. If you need that, if you need a break from all that, and I know you do because you're still in this pandemic, you're still in bits of racial unrest, you're still in the middle of of, uh, of being in America in a very rough time. Um, so if, if you're in the middle of that, and even those outside of America, you're living on the planet in a very rough time, uh, it, it, this is a good show. This is a good antidote to everything that ails you. Um, I give this show a 4.5 of five stars. This was a fantastic show. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, 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 I have very, very few complaints and it's very hard to articulate those complaints. The show's not perfect, but it's hard to articulate why it's not perfect, which I know somebody's probably screaming at me, then give it five stars. And I, I just, I, I, I can't quite do that because it's kind of one of those I'll know it when I see it. But the show is great. You should watch it. Watch it with your kids. Watch it with your grandparents. Watch it with your cats, your dogs. Watch it. I mean, with whoever, whomever you choose to watch this show with. I, yeah, great show. <sighs> great show. And with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. To find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studios shows, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. Leaving the Theater will be back soon, but until then, I'll be here on the couch.